We should be coming in live. And there we are. Awesome, awesome. Hi, everyone. This is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another live stream. Today is October 5th, 2020, and we're doing our math tutoring session number 60. Let's do some mathematics, mainly high school, uh, some elementary. Uh, definitely pre calc is in the game. A little bit of calculus, a little bit of stats, and whatnot. And we've done a lot of these in the past, uh, and we will be doing a lot more in the future. Uh, especially considering that uh, right now there's a whole shift happening in education and the decentralization of education. Something that's been working towards uh, for a long time now, I guess. Right. Uh, aside from that, welcome. Um, this is a math drop in tutoring session. Uh, math discussion, open discussion, but math discussion supersedes everything else. So if there is anything we're talking about that uh, uh, is not math related and the math question comes up, oh, mathematics takes over. Okay, reset. Right. Aside from that, let me tell you who I am. I am on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash chicho, C-H-Y-C-H-O. If you want to follow this work, if you want to support this work, if you want to know what this work is about, Spider-Man, yo, yo, how are you doing? Hello, hello, and good morning to another set of live streams. And if you want to know what this work is about, uh, Patreon is a good place to be. Okay. And I don't put anything behind paywalls. Everything's Creative Commons. Share and share alike. So you can follow the work. And after a certain period, if you think this work is worth supporting, supporting this work through Patreon is a fantastic way to make sure we continue this project. We are live streaming on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Chicho Live, C H Y C H O L I V E. If you want to participate in the chat, Twitch is where you want to be at. Catholic traditions, how are you doing? I still have a few scars from the mass session I had with my daughter last night. Ouch. She's definitely not taking to algebra as quickly as my elders said. Elders. Yeah, everybody's so different Catholic tradition, let's say. Like, uh, and parents teaching kids, um, very difficult. Family members doing the teaching uh, is difficult. Uh, there's more challenges involved, right? Lucio Petrosian Philohaif of Iloho. <laughs> Welcome to our live stream. I have no idea how to say your name. <laughs> Lori's man, how are you doing? Hello, hello. And good morning, good afternoon to everyone. Okay. And for those of you who are following this work on Twitch, uh, subscribe to this work on Twitch drop in for our tutoring sessions or any of the other live streams we do thank you very much for being here and the mods thank you for taking care of business and for those of you who have been supporting this work through twitch through patreon through other means thank you very much for your support nights of old comics chicho going crazy trying to teach my six-year-old daughter math i get so frustrated when she seems to not try yeah and uh, nights of old comic if they're not trying is because um, there could be multiple reasons uh, pull back on the throttle okay uh, you seen seen my liquors I don't think I've seen your liquors maybe if you post them on discord I'll, I'll see them by the way uh, Lucio okay uh, but nice old comic uh, pull back on the throttle a little bit if they're not they don't seem to be paying attention and just ease off and just chill with it for a bit and then try to introduce it to them in an indirect kind of way, something that they can relate to. Uh, explain to them as a language. If they're not paying attention, it could be they're missing a certain concept that is making whatever you're teaching them go over their head. So it's, they're not grasping the, the rhythm of it, right? Uh, it's very tricky. It's very personal, brother very personal lonely piggy chicho how is life had my first interview with the rcmp last week went super well in my opinion excited to see the uh result any snacks for today's mastery i do actually i got the uh, check this out usually i have tahini with honey and maple syrup and stuff like this but this one is uh sesame seeds um sesame sesame seeds with honey um so it's not tahini but it's uh sesame sunflower seeds sorry it's not sesame seeds sunflower seed butter 
with honey and it's really good it's a different flavor it's very smooth there's no sharpness to it so it's really good it's good as a spread and what i do with this as well and with peanut butter i take these peanut butter butter and this butter and i mix it in with jam and i use it as a filling for um, like a flat of cookies that i make sort of a crumble so i make flour layer put a layer down and then i take sesame um sunflower seeds or peanut butter and mix it up with jam and then put a layer and then put another layer of flour on top and cook it in a platter uh, so that sort of becomes that sort of becomes my cookie and i got some coffee today too fluffy coffee catholic traditionist she heard from a few of, uh, of her friends of the same age at her dance studio that they are not yet having to do algebra oh she's a bit outraged i do not sure this stuff at all uh catholic traditionist my students i have the same issue with my students okay when i start teaching them additional content that they need at that time right so i have a lot of students that once we're once we're caught up with class material right they shut down they don't want to learn anything else right so i take the class material and i say well do you know why you're learning this so that's that's one of the things uh, i guess weapons i have at my disposal that to trigger intrigue or interest for my students right when they're learning something in general they have no idea why they're learning it right it may be factoring maybe solving for x may it be whatever it might be right they don't know why they're doing it they just go through the motion of doing it so i try to tell them why they're doing it and if they're fairly young and actually any math that they're learning pre grade 11 in my part of the world it, they really don't tell them why they're learning it it's grade 11 and 12 that you really get into the whys where the supplies right so i start taking whatever it is that they're learning and showing them that it's just part of a bigger puzzle so that's one thing trick i have that i use and then i go do you know why you're learning this for example factoring and they go no and i go okay well this is the reason why you're learning it and i go equal to zero and once you show them that they go oh that's easy uh and i go do you know what this means and they go no what does it mean I go well it's the x-intercepts on a cartesian coordinate system so all of a sudden i kick them into like two years above what they're learning so start asking them do you know why you're doing this do you know why this works maybe that'll work dove dove have you ever watched the utopia uh tv series oh you know what uh i looked at it i haven't watched it yet lucio i posted on discord food to pick with lots of bottles uh was that a while ago or was it just this morning if it was a while ago i see, i saw it meta dragon whoa right on time didn't know math discussion is just what we needed today hope you are all doing well uh, doing awesome so happy to be here awesome to have you knights of old comic uh i turned into a drill sergeant and next thing i know i'm yelling at my wife <laughs> nice old comic <laughs> funny funny don't turn into a drill sergeant double o negative can we discuss an easy way to simplify radicals maybe how to multiply radicals etc let me write this down and if there's a quick trick uh for factoring uh i'm having to resort to a calculator uh far too often sure so radicals and factoring so let's write this down radicals and factoring okay i'm writing above our my little intro thing my seventh grade needs to needs the why as did i or else it's, it's a non-starter yeah that is a great approach i work on providing a strong sense of how everything uh catholic church says everything she learns can be applied her school is great about doing that awesome awesome odin is with us <laughs> lockdown messiah kenny roberts hello 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 a month ago oh yeah i would have seen it the liqueur pics you posted a month ago there was a uh, yeah the, 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 i remember people posting some uh i didn't know it was you 
uh, some of the cure picks double O negative thanks Chicho this online college algebra class is kicking my ass it's like learning math on tables <laughs> yeah brutal <laughs> brutal uh, finishing off the intro I do announce these live streams on LO minds VK parlor gab and Twitter 30 minutes before we go live and just a few minutes before we go live for unscheduled live streams and you can follow the work there for live streams we don't have any visuals involved uh we do record the audio and as podcasts and upload them to soundcloud.com forward slash chicho so you can follow the work there and they should be available on your favorite po podcasting platform including spotify and thanks to cheryl we just recently got it approved on apple or itunes or apple podcast i don't know what it's called now it used to be called itunes someone said it's apple podcast or something now so it should be available on apple as well and we will be uploading this video this live stream to be shoot in youtube and if you want to support this work on those platforms you can subscribe you can follow you can like uh, you can turn on notifications uh, participate participate in the discussion and if you're on youtube there should be a join button there where you can join the youtube uh, channel and support the work uh, that way okay aside from that uh, thank you for being here again i'm just going to take these guys down and let's deal with radicals first okay do you have plans when you will play again with your grandma oh my grandma um i'll let you know i'll let you know my grandma's 92 years old uh, gang um and uh, she had an episode in the last couple of weeks just because of covid and she was left alone for a long time and stuff like this just because family couldn't visit and whatnot so um she's going through some hard times and uh i was actually planning to go see her this weekend but unfortunately i didn't get a chance to go see her yeah elder god unfortunately i didn't get a chance to go see her and i hope uh, that i'm going to get a chance to go see her soon okay so i'm on a hair trigger right now um that i might be uh you know i through three years basically of being on twitch i've only had to cancel one twitch live streams that we've scheduled okay um depending on how things go other i might cancel a few more if we set them or i might try to bring my grandma here and uh, if i bring her here man we're doing like as long as she stays here we'll be doing a math live stream not math the backgammon live stream every day multiple times a day okay so just letting you know just keeping you guys in the loop my grandmother has lymphoma oh catheters in my family will keep her in our thoughts and prayers thank you brother family first cheryl says elder god me too me too let's do this radicals 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 let's take this down let's erase oh no we're not gonna erase anything doop, doop, doop. let me put this guy here okay gang let's talk about radicals and who was this that asked uh, about the radicals um double o negative double o negative it was you wasn't it um yeah double o negative okay and anybody else by the way if chicho can help what calc miro to a certain degree i'm working on calculus with a student of mine that's in college right now so we're working on it together and it's i forgot how fun how amazing calculus is really and we're going through the online course together uh, talking about limits right now and simplifying and with functions and graphs and stuff and it is amazing so if calculus questions come up uh, I can I'll try to help uh, the intro stuff as we progress together through calculus I can do more and more with you guys I have a pencil ready double O negative teach me your grade one okay gang if there's any places you don't understand something let me know and we'll go over it okay young polacks how are you doing and v i saw v subscribing here thank you for the follow or subscribe radicals radicals are the opposite of exponents um powers right but they are powers right so for example the opposite of addition is subtraction the opposite of multiplication is division 
all three of these are really addition but they're they're unique so we give them their own special symbols right to simplify matters okay who is calling me nvs how are you doing hello everyone hey chicho welcome welcome back to another stream okay so opposite of addition and subtraction opposite of multiplication is division right well opposite of powers exponents right so for example in here you could say two to the power of three okay is radicals right is these guys okay but these guys happen to be exponents as well right just like let me erase this okay we know about the factor remind me to do factoring after this right just like this for example right addition and subtraction if you want to subtract something you go something plus negative something that's really subtraction right if you're going to multiply something you're going to something times or divide something times one over something that's really division right now radicals is the same thing same type of process happening because if you want to take the radical the root of something what you do is you take the number here and if it's just a square root it goes in the power in the denominator right so if you have a number this is the exponent right 2 to the power of 3 and if you go in the exponent divided by something that's the root okay this is what you need to keep in mind okay this is what you need to keep in mind I'm gonna do a little bit more of this thing Baba hey Chicho looking forward to some of the these upcoming streams grass selection the alien one should be particularly should be it should be very interesting stuff right now take a look at this thing let's expand on this right so just imagine this what if I said what's the square root and you don't need a two if you say square root right what if I say the square root of five and I ask you to put this in exponent form right well five is to the power of one and the square root means there's a two there so this goes in the denominator in the power so this is really five to the power of a half you're okay with that I'm assuming right if I say what's the cube root of 32 well this guy goes in the exponent in the denominator so this is 32 to the power of one third you're okay with this so far right I hope this is coming out okay by the way again I hope it's not too light okay if I say what's the fourth root of 5 to the power of 8 right Hold on. 5 to the power of 8 right this guy goes in the exponent in the denominator so this becomes 5 to the power of 8 over 4 right now this is just a straight up fraction 8 over 4 8 over 4 reduces down to 2 so this becomes 5 to the power of 2 which is just 25 right so this is one way you can simplify radicals just straight up radicals okay now uh, double O negative I don't know what level of radicals we're talking about that you need help with right elder guy I know this mouth well right so this is the basic preliminary stuff that you do to simplify radicals keeping this in mind let's kick this up a notch right let's see let's kick it up a notch here one more level so you see the whole thing in one picture and then we'll erase everything we'll go up here and do more and more complicated and build on this okay now keep keep this in mind take a look at this thing what if I told you this what's the cube root of 6 to the power of 7 x to the power of 4 z to the power of 6 right and this is the type of stuff you will get if you're starting off with radicals right well to do this there's a couple of ways you can do it right 
I'm going to do the Speedy Gonzales style and then we're going to erase everything and we're going to go through the two different ways you can think about how this works. Okay. One way you can do this is you can say that you're looking for groups of three because you're taking a cube root, right? Chicho, if I have one day and two hours played on a specific Titan from Titan 2, who more kills? How many kills did I get per hour? I'm not 100% sure, but I'm going to do the radical right now. <laughs> I should saw this. I'll figure it out. <laughs> figure it out, Ding Bobber, right? So take a look at this thing. I'm going to do this quick for you, the one method, which is really fast. And then we'll break it down that you see how it works. Okay. When you're taking the root of something, you're really looking for this many groupings, right? Square root means you're looking for a pair. Cube root means you're looking for triplets. Fourth root means you're looking for four of a kind, right? And what that means is if you can find four of a kind inside a radical, you can bring it out as a single, right? So over here, six to the power of seven, you ask yourself, how many times does three go into seven? Because if you convert this to the root format, okay, to the exponent format, this becomes six to the power of seven over three, x to the power of four over three, and z to the power of six over two, a uh, six over three, right? Now I'm gonna erase this. I just want you to see what I'm doing right so what you do is ask yourself how many times does three go into seven you say twice so six squared comes out what you have left is what's still inside the radical so three goes into seven twice so six squared comes out and there's one six left over you put a six here how many times does three go into four once so an x comes out and there's one X left over. How many times does three go into six? Twice. So, oh, sorry, Z twice. So Z squared comes out and there's no more Zs left over, right? So this guy simplified is this, okay? Now, double O negative. Let me know if this is okay for you so far and anybody else, because I'm gonna explain this using two different methods one of them the style that i did now the other one with the roots okay or with the exponent i always feel so embarrassed when it comes to my math skills and vss i was very bad with math in my school times but this mostly have to do with my teachers i think yeah he was so rude and made sure everyone in class knew when i had a bad test result or something probably he thought uh this motivates me but this made me afraid of math and him. Uh, envious, you're not alone. I almost pulled out of the sciences because of grade 12 math teacher I had. He was horrendous. Okay. Absolutely horrendous. And he, he made me dislike math because he was garbage. <laughs> like literally, right? So keep this in mind. Okay. Radical. Okay, now I'm going to break this whole thing down for you so you see it, okay? A radical has a number here. If there is no number, it means square root. It means you're looking for two of a kind, right? So whatever is in here, if you can break it down into groupings of this, you can bring it out, right? Double O negative. Yes, this is great stuff. I'm trying to find a specific problem for you. I think what I'm confused on is getting radicals as solutions for equations, quadratics, uh, and the like. Ah, okay. So what you're having an issue with is linking up the radicals with the factoring because that's really the two connecting together right think about her i did the math i have 4.1 kills a minute nice we call them surds here in the uk surds you call radical surds no what do you call them iced fixed inside here the grouping you're looking for is this right so if i write down a number let's say this is uh let's keep it simple-ish let's say this is 300 okay and we're looking for the square root and you don't need to put the two there if it's a square root right two what that means is you're looking for pairs in here 
and pairs you can bring out as singles. So what you do is you break down 300. 3 times 100. 100 breaks down into 10 times 10. Now you can break that 10 down into its prime factors again, right? You can break it down into 2 times 5, 2 times 5. But if we're looking for 2 of a kind, we already found 2 of a kind, 2 tenths. And what you do is a pair can come out of the radical as a single thing. So these two guys merge together and come out as 10 on the outside. And what you have left on the inside, these guys, these guys are gone. Anything that's split is gone. So this is out, this is out. So the only thing left inside the square root symbol is a three. So it's 10 root three, okay? Strawberry, please calculate the curvature of the earth. I am so confused why we can never see this uh, supposed curve represented in our real lives because our line of sight is limited, right? We have mountains, we have trees. If you if you want if you want to see the curvature of the earth, stand at the edge of the ocean where you can see ships coming on the horizon. Okay. Grab telescope, binoculars, and if you know there's a ship coming, look at it, and what you'll see, here's the horizon, right? And you'll see the mask of the ship slowly coming up as it comes closer and closer to you, right? That's the curvature of the earth. You're looking over a curve. So the mask of the ship is rising because it's coming over a curve, it's coming over a hill. You want to measure it? There's different ways of measuring it. Okay. Precisely, I'm able to get a radical out with the answer, but I'm not understanding how to simplify the solution, specifically when the answer is a radical as a fraction. Okay. Flat Earth. <laughs> yeah, some people have that question, Elder God, right? They never thought about it because they read things online. They never experiment. And experimentation is the key to understanding the world. Okay. You can see the ship reappear if you uh, use a zoom telescope. Sure. But that's because your line of sight is only so far on that same ship. Start looking at it with the telescope as far as you can and you'll see the same effect because your eyes are lens you'll see the same effect the ship comes over again right it's just how far you can go one experiment created flat earth theory <laughs> right so ding bobber uh, or not ding bobber double o negative check this out all right so you're having a radical without answer without understanding how to simplify the solution specifically when the answer is a radical is a fraction okay so let's erase this right and put different numbers in here let's take this out so let's assume this isn't a square root this is a cube root right a three and in here haha <laughs> see death 420 how are you doing welcome welcome to the live stream crafter hello hello let's assume this was 81 over uh 20 no, not 20, 20, 24, 24, 24, 24. Okay. So we got cube root of 81 over 24. So what you want to do, okay, break down each one of these individually. So take 81, right? 81, break it down. 9 times 9. Now, if we're taking the square root, right, you already found a pair, you could just to take the two nines out right but we're looking for the cube root so we're looking for three of a kind so nine becomes three times three nine becomes three times three we're looking for triplets three of a kind so here's a triplet right these three can come out of the radical as a single three and inside is a three left over right so a three comes out so a three comes out you got cube root of three up top. Cool. So if you bring the three in, it multiplies itself three times, and then times the three, it's 81. So this means this, right? Now let's deal with 24. 24. 24 is 2 times 12. 12 is 2 times 6. 6 is 2 times 3. Right? Cool. Cool. 
We're looking for triplets. Here's three twos. So three twos can come out as a two, and there's a three left over inside. Interesting, but three over three on the inside. Keep in mind, the 24 was in the denominator here. So whatever you do to it has to be in the denominator. So the two comes out, goes in the denominator here, and there's a three left over here. Cool. So this thing so far has simplified to three over two, Q root of three over three. But three over three is just one. Anything divided by itself is one. So this is three over two, Q root of one, and the Q root of one is just one. So this just simplifies to three over two. Okay. Good morning. Zach the Ripper Comics. <laughs> Ripper, how are you doing? Lack of caring friends, how are you doing? Around, I guess, elder crafter had math class from 8 p.m. 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. study for another hour, and I'm here to watch for some more. Nice <laughs> crafter <laughs> ripper. Hope you're doing well. Now, take a look at this thing. If this simplified to three over two, that means we could have simplified this up here. Let's see if we can simplify this up here. Did we do it correctly? I think so. I hope so. Do, 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 do. Let's check it out. Let's erase these. And you always usually want to simplify things. Oh, well, Zach says, how are you doing well, brother? Thank you very much. Okay. Over here, 81. What number goes both into 81 and 24? If you know your multiplication, you should be able to do this. And you should know, you should be able to maneuver around numbers from zero all the way to 100 in multiplication pretty well right because you deal with those a lot right if you know how to simplify this you would go so this is one way you could have done it here's another way you could have done it right you could have gone 81 here 81 over 24 oops 24 3 goes into 81 27 times 3 goes into this 8 times so this would have been Q root of 27 over 8 and 27 is 3 times 3 times 3 so that's three threes and if you're looking for the cube root three threes can come out as one three if you want we'll break it down this would be cube root 27 breaks down into three times three times three eight breaks down into two times two times two we're looking for the cube root three of a kind so that means these three can come out as a three these twos can come out as a two so it's three over two and there's nothing left inside the radical symbol okay Zach finally catching a stream again sleeping schedule hasn't worked with the time zone difference of the streams very happy to catch this one awesome river nice to have you crafter try to compute multiplication without the rules that you figured out steady is really it's difficult right racer kill how are you doing it's easier to just write it in exponent form and go back after reducing the fraction it is to a certain degree for for some for the more you do the easier it becomes that way but right now in like one of the problems people have in high school mathematics is they're scared of fractions fractions freaks people out which is crazy right one of the reasons fractions freaks people out is because when they're young even in elementary school in math class they tell students just to use a calculator so once students start using a calculator and most of them don't even know how to use a calculator properly they start using a calculator they don't understand what fractions means they can only understand numbers in decimal format right and then they're lost eagles eagles and cycling how are you doing how did i find your twitch schedule uh, how do i find uh, love watching you but usually miss you live i do post it on our patreon page and it is on our discord page as well uh, so I do sets unfortunately I don't have set times per week I announce sets as I can fit them in and then I do the streams okay fractions are so simple once you understand the whole yeah it it, it is it is uncharted uncharted is thank you very much for the twitch prime sub uh, appreciate it now was it was it double or negative you said you're having a hard time understanding solving for 
radicals, right? So let's assume we have the following. And let me know if this is along the lines of what you're working on. Uncharted Days, Chicho, hope you and Chad are well, doing well. Thank you very much, Uncharted Days. And again, thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. Now take a look at this thing. What if I ask you to solve the following uh, equation, right? What if I said 3x cubed minus 48 is equal to 100 and uh, 100 and I'm trying to think of a number that's going to have a cube root of it. Uh, and it's going to divide it by 3. So that's 18, 18. Let's make that. Let's go 48. 48. Okay, this should work. Should give us an answer. I'm following you so far. How about multiplying radicals, for example? For sure, we'll do that as well. Uh, since we got on this, let's solve this and then we'll do the multiplication. The multiplying radicals is multiplying dividing radicals is easy as well. Okay. But we'll deal with it as soon as we solve this one, right? So if you want to solve for something, solve, oops, solve, it means get the variable by itself. To get the variable by itself, you undo what's being done to it, okay? Undo what's being done to it. So if you know bed mass, right? If you're simplifying, you do bed mass brackets and all that jazz. If you're solving, you do the opposite of bed mass in the reverse direction. So bed mass so this is brackets exponents division multiplication addition subtraction these guys have the same weight right so if you're simplifying you go this way if you're solving you go this way okay like really now we're solving right so we've got to take care of subtraction and addition first. So first thing you do is you undo the subtraction that's happening to this. So you grab this guy, bring it over, you go plus 48, okay? This becomes um, 96, right? 48, six, one, 96, right? And over here, we got three X cubed. Okay, then you deal with multiplication and division, right? Randall, how are you doing? Okay, now you deal with multiplication and division. So it's three times the x. You divide by three, divide by three. So on this side, we've got x cubed is equal to 96 divided by three. That becomes 32, right? 32. Nine divided by three is three. Six divided by two. Six divided by three is two. Now, don't do it that way if it doesn't go evenly. You can just do that because it's obvious, right? And then you got to deal with exponents and brackets. We got no brackets, but we got to deal with the exponents first. We got to undo a cube. The opposite of cubed is the cube root. So you're going to take the cube root of this side and the cube root of this side. Okay. Let me erase this so we can do it. If you're going to do that, then break down 32. 32 is four times eight, two times two, 2 times 4, 2 times 4. If we're looking for a cube root of something, cube root of something, we're looking for 3 of a kind. Here's 3 twos. 3 of a kind can come out as a single, right? So 3 twos come out as a single 2. And you got 2 twos left over. And that's, here, let me write this so we get more space. So line up your equal sign. You brought 3 twos out, so that's a 2. And inside the cube root, you have 2 times 2 left, which is 4. And over here, cube root of x cubed is just x, right? That's how you solve. That's how the radicals come into play, right? In terms of multiplying radicals and stuff, multiplying and dividing, let's do one of those guys. Right? If you're adding and subtracting radicals, they have to be identical. If you're multiplying and dividing radicals, Numbers deal with numbers, radicals deal with radicals, okay? So let's do multiplication and divisions first before we do addition and subtraction because multiplication and division seems to be easier than addition and subtraction, right? So let's assume we have two, the square root of five times three, the square root of 10, right? 
awesome that makes so much more sense now thanks my pleasure double o negative that was really well explained thanks normally i can solve such things but have trouble figuring out how to solve them i'm glad this is helping by the way it's really important radicals are insanely important by the way again right because it's really defines irrational numbers for you right zach chicho have you seen an uptick in your tutoring with the current state of north american education due to the pandemic to a certain degree um it's uh schools are adjusting uh zach so schools are trying to figure out how to do it so the work i'm getting from schools uh, hasn't kicked up it's actually diminished a little bit from last year but the word of mouth the independent private tutoring that i'm doing and i the school is private as well but they hire me subcontract me the private tutoring the word of mouth uh is kicked up a little bit uh especially uh increasing frequency and the number of people as well right so people that i might might have tutored with like once a week or twice a week previously now we're doing three or four times a week because it's accelerated and there's new people coming in right catholic resistance the following quotient often attributed to galileo has always uh, quotation always appeared to me mathematics is a language in which god has written the universe yeah i've read that before catholic this i like it mass certainly gives us powerful tools to understand the world around. indeed so let's assume we had that this they're multiplying each other right if this is the case this is what you do number multiplies number and as long as the radicals are the same radicals this is a square root and that's a square root this multiplies this so 2 times 3 is 6 square root of 5 times 10 is 50 when you multiply this out you should simplify if you can right so break down 50 5 times 10 5 times 2 square root means you're looking for a pair a pair comes out if there's a number waiting for it on the other side they multiply each other so 5 times 6 is 30 what's left in the square root symbol 2 so it becomes 30 square root of 2 that's what this times this is okay i hope that's clear now take a look at this what if we had multiple things multiplied together what if we had 2 square root of 3 times 4 square root of 6 times 5 square root of uh no, no let's not make it eight let's make it uh da -da 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 -da. let's make it um, 15 15 do we want that big sure let's make it 15 okay 15. you're good with that right now numbers multiply numbers and then radicals multiply radicals right take a look at this this thing focusing focusing two times four is eight eight times five is 40 right square root of and we can multiply the radicals because all three of them was square root right now in general you're going to multiply them all together and then reduce them right but why do the extra work because you're going to break them apart anyway right so if we do this here let's do this on the side right uh what's the easiest way to do this let's go six times 15. 6 times 15, oops, 6 times 15, all right? 6 times 5 is 30, 3. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 9, plus 3 is 9. And then times 3, so this becomes 270. So you get 270 here, right? Don't do that. Because the first thing we're going to do, whatever we get on the inside, we're going to break it apart. So if you have things multiply together that's going to give you a big number don't even bother multiplying it because you're going to break it down inside the radical just do this right just write down each one individually or just go whatever the multiplication is i don't care what it is because i'm going to break it down anyway and this thing breaks down into three times six times fifteen it's just a shortcut to save you time right lack of caring i also tutor math and it breaks my heart to see bright students think they can't do math because of of they had incompetence a lack of caring a 100 percent agree right 
that's what lit, lights a fire under my ass tell you the truth because once you get a student that flips that all of a sudden goes what it, it's just you have them it's it's amazing right zach thank you very much for the twitch prime sub right so you tap this thing we don't have to figure out what that is because whatever that was it was just these three multiplied together so we just write it down as those three multiplied together and then we can break these down three times two 15 is three times five right now we're looking for the square root that means we're looking for a pair right if we have multiple pairs we bring them out if we have one pair we bring it out whatever pairs we have we get it <laughs> zach says i'm not my student mr izakaya how are you doing my math teacher has a uh, monotone voice and dead eyes good asmr to go to sleep with right lack of caring exactly exactly lights a fire on their ass so we're looking for a pair because it's a square root here's a pair of threes so a pair of threes comes out as a single three multiplies whatever is on the outside three times 40 is 120 because three times four is 12 and you got a zero right so 120 we don't have any other pairs so it's just these guys multiplied together two times five is ten times three is thirty right so all of these multiplied together is this now what if all of these were cube root let's assume this was cube root cube root cube root you would do exactly the same but this would just be a cube root and instead of looking for two of a kind you're looking for three of a kind and three of a kind we would have three twos three threes here Whoop. and three threes would come out multiply to 40 with 120 and on the inside we would just have a two and a five which would be 10 and you'd be doing the cube root of it okay your math teacher must have been a Saint Cheryl says. <laughs> Does that make sense? Okay. Now take a look at this thing. There is other things happen with this, right? What if we had actually let me rewrite it so you see it. What if we had variables multiplied together? There were radicals and variables, right? So let's assume we had 2 square root of x times 3 square root of 3x right again number multiplies number radical multiplies radical 2 times 3 is 6 square root of x times 3x is 3x squared and 3x squared you can simplify right because x squared is x times x you can grab two x's bring it out as a single so this becomes 6x square root of 3. That's what's left over, right? So that is 6x square root of 3. But what if we had this, right? This is where the power play comes in, right? What if this was 2x, a 2 square root of x times 3 cube root of x, right? Danite, how are you doing? If you have a square root times a cube root, you can't just multiply these together, right? It doesn't work. The numbers work. So 2 times 3 is 6, okay? You got the 6 here, but you can't go, you know, you can write it like this, square root of x and cube root of x, but that's disgustingly messy. It's ugly, right? It's not simple. So we're not going to deal with it that way. So if you have variables or even numbers that have different radicals in them, what you do is you write them as powers. Now remember, we said if it's a square root, there's a 2 here, and that goes in the denominator and the power. And if we've got a cube root, that goes in the denominator and the power, right? So this really becomes 2x to the power of 1 over 2 times 3 x to the power of 1 over 3. Is that clear? Double O negative. I hope so. Okay, or anyone else watching this, by the way, right? Well, if that's the case, if you have numbers, variables that have the same base, 
and these guys do have the same base, if they're multiplying each other, then all you got to do is add the exponents, right? So for example, x squared times x cubed, you just add the exponents as x to the power of 5. Yes, sir. Sorry, I was passing notes in class. No worries. Not below negative, right? So this becomes x to the power of 5, right? If you have 2 to the power of 3 times 2 to the power of 8, they have the same base. You just add the exponents. It's 2 to the power of 11. Well, that also works for fractions. If you have x to the power of a half times x to the power of a third, this is adding these guys. So that's x to the power of a half plus 1 over 3. And that's adding fractions, which is finding the common denominator. So this becomes x to the power of a half plus 1 over 3. How do you add fractions? You can do it on the side. 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3. You need a common denominator. Common denominator is 6. You multiply this by 3, multiply this by 3. So that's 3 plus times 2 times 2, 2. So that's 5 over 6. So this becomes 6x to the power of 5 over 6. And if you're going to write this in radical form, it's 6, the 6 root of x to the power of 5. Okay. Does that make sense? Dovda, is your audience mainly children? Uh, not necessarily, no. Uh, we have college university students as well uh, high school kids that's what I really focus on high school mathematics okay but high school mathematics does is not just for kids it's not just for people in high school if you have high school mathematics you can rule the world if you want right if you if you understand fractions and ratios you could be a you could go into the stock market and trade to your heart's content as long as you understand what the uh, meaning of the different ratios are that you're looking at right the metrics of any trading system if we consider typical addition always right I hope that's clear we could do another one like this here watch this what if I said let take it to extreme go go radical with it right square root of 2 times cube root of 2 times uh, fourth root of 2 cubed and let's make this 2 squared right so we have this all of this multiplying together okay let's do another Zach says nice you can't do an advanced market analysis without some serious uh, foundation statistic statistics is just it's statistics is is basically looking at the variables right i agree statistics is extremely important you can run filters through it and stuff like this but statistics is da data management right what's the z number for normal distribution right the z number is just a it's just ratios it's just fractions right you take the average subtracted by this divided by standard deviations what's the standard deviation standard deviation is another formula way to number crunch right your data set to get a feel for what the variance is really right so it's just words that sort of terminology that you have to understand what the equations are telling you how you ended up crunching the numbers right sometimes we had these exercises in elementary school that were basic algebra but since they don't teach algebra at elementary school you go to explain it in other uh, in some other way yeah and they should be teaching algebra in elementary school why aren't they right so if we're going to multiply all these together now if all of these were square roots square root of 2 times square root of 2 squared times uh, fourth root of 2 to the power of 3 oh sorry not fourth root square root of 2 to the power of 3 they're all square roots so you just multiply these guys 2 is 2 to the power of 1. You add up the exponents. So this is the square root of 1, 3, 6. 2 to the power of 6. Square root of 2 to the power of 6. If you want to think about it in radical form, it becomes 2, 6 over 2, which is 2 cubed, which is equal to 8. Right? Simple enough. Okay. 
Now, let's deal with this one. Racer kill. Uh, I'd say you need a relatively high level knowledge of statistics to do such jobs. That said, a lot of people don't and just plug numbers into formulas. Agreed, Racer kill. Uh, if you don't, if you're just doing trading, you don't need that high level of math to be able to invest in a company you need to know what the number is telling you so you don't need to know it's like program it's like using and playing a game you don't need to know the program behind the game you just need to know how to play the game going into the stock market doing trading you don't need to know the program behind the game you need to know how to play the game right and knowing how to play the game is understanding in terms of wall street is understanding what the ratios are telling you right okay square root is the same as one over two blew my mind indeed right so take a look at this thing zach chicho i went through my entire u.s 14 year education preschool k-12 without ever having an algebra class horrible <laughs> without ever having an algebra class. this is ripper no way man oh my god insanity insanity right so take a look at this thing let's write all of these as powers right I agree with that. You do need at least an elementary level knowledge. It's not enough to do it as a job, but enough to for personal use. Yeah, and that's what I mean, by the way. I don't mean going into Golden Sachs and coming up with new derivative derivatives that you can peddle to uh, investors so you can make more money. I'm talking about trading, right? We have algebra in sixth grade here in Swiss, which is elementary school. Yeah, uh, Skag mathematics education in canada and united states is garbage garbage okay chicho i swear i have a most difficult math class they taught was geometry perhaps it's uh since changed since i graduated in the early 2000s man that's unfortunate lack of caring says how is that even possible it's crazy it's crazy so all we do convert these things Two exponents right so this becomes two to the power of a half times two to the power of this goes in the denominator two over three times two to the power of three over four well they're the same base so all you got to do is add those guys that's all right so this becomes two to the power of a half plus two over three plus three over four two to the power of common denominator is 12 you multiply this by 6 this becomes 6 you multiply that by 4 this becomes 8 you multiply that by 3 this becomes 9 so this becomes 2 to the power of what have we got Five, 6 plus 8 is 14 14 plus 9 is 23 2 to the power of 23 over 12 so this is the 12th root of 2 to the power of 23 now you can simplify this one more level right you can ask yourself you're looking for the 12th root right that means you're looking for 12 of a kind how many 12 of a kinds how many 12s are there in 23 1 12 with 11 left over right there's 23 twos here you can take out 12 uh, sorry 23 twos you can take out 12 of them and there'll be 11 left over right well, 12 of them can come out as a single two, right? Because we're looking for the 12th root. And you got the 12th root of 2 to the power of 11. That would be the simplest expression, version, and that's a 12, of those guys multiplied together. I hope that's clear. I hope that's clear. Yeah? Just teach the X, yeah. I usually, when people are trying to learn algebra, just solving equations, if they're having a hard time, I just say placeholder. I use a box instead of an X. And then I go, listen, you don't want to use a box all the time. It's just crazy. Just mark it as X marks the spot, like a pirate, right? Um, what else was there with this? And then we were going to go into factoring, right? Let's talk about factoring. Let me have a sip of my coffee the phone went away on it
my beverage right now is uh, coffee with oat milk it's pretty good I put honey in it lots of honey and I got uh, sunflower seeds with honey in it it's like uh, sunflower butter with honey so it's like peanut butter but sunflower uh, butter is very is gentle with honey is really good Miro Chicho have you heard of the JWE exams if so what's your thought I don't know them oat milk did you say oat milk yeah elder god double or negative yeah how about a quick and easy factor in lesson she show i have to go fly a plane here soon <laughs> here soon okay what type of um are we talking about factoring quadratics or just straight up sunflower seeds and honey wow new recipe i learned today it's really good it's a good snack it's better than peanut butter it doesn't screw up your omega-3 levels really I'm more of a cashew milk kind of guy mm. looks delicious is that a protein butter um, I don't know elder God should know let's do the quadratic okay let's do quadratic I got tea as well by the way why not eat straight protein butter <laughs> do you think you could uh, do it with pumpkin seeds instead of sunflower seeds you should be able to Miro I haven't tried it though uh, pumpkin seed butter why not uh, I hear that J double E advance is quite difficult yeah I don't know what type of questions they ask for that gang in terms of factoring 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 is you can think about as two different types of things right peanuts are fairly high in protein um our god says factoring think about it two ways right one of them is you're looking to see what's common between them and you're always going to look for that it's called gcf so the first type of factor you're always going to look for is the greatest common factor it is greatly underused always always i don't care what type of factoring you're trying to do always look for the gcf okay almonds are amazing walnut is the, I, for me the per the best nuts the most nuts that i eat is walnuts and almonds by a long shot like it blows away all the other nuts that i eat all right let's go <laughs> large gamer friend how are you doing conquer on almonds also yes walnuts yeah so always look for a gcf the other types of factoring that you learn straight out are these right difference of squares difference of squares that's what they call them three is simple trinomial trinomial complex trinomial complex trinomial and then you got the quadratic equation quadratic formula x is equal to negative b plus or minus b squared plus uh oops minus minus 4ac over 2a and then you got long division and synthetic division right synthetic synthetic division where you're breaking uh large polynomials down trying to find out what factors into them right camera why now but when i was super serious on the diet almonds walnuts were the ones i think because of the fats in there yeah, brazil nuts, yeah, lots of nut discussion here lots of healthy fats and almonds they're tasty and filling and filling right so we want to do sort of complex trinomial and stuff like this but these are all of these guys right check this out all of these guys all of them really what you're doing is you're breaking things down equations or expressions so it's a whole bunch of things multiplied together right so you're taking something like this you're taking something an expression 
like this or an equation like this, right? That could have access to different powers. And you're going to try to factor it to get it into things multiplied together to equal zero. Keep this in mind. You're going to try to convert something like this into things multiplied together to give you zero. And the reason you're doing this is because once you convert an equation like this to something like this, it means you can use the power of zero where it allows you to take things that are multiplied together to equal zero to split them up to each one equaling zero and we've talked about this right so if you have a times b times c times d equals zero right how could you multiply four things to give you zero well at least one of them has to be zero at least one of them has to be zero so you set each one equal to zero and you solve for them because all all of those would be possible solutions right so you could say a could equal to zero b could equal to zero c could equal to zero and d could equal to zero or a combination of all those right well that's exactly what we do here we say this could equal zero this could equal zero or this could equal zero right and if we took this equation which was different terms added and subtracted together and convert it into things multiplied together. For example, let's assume this was x plus 1, x minus 1, 2x plus 3. Then you could say x plus 1 is equal to 0, so x is equal to negative 1. x minus 1 is equal to 0, so x is equal to 1. 2x plus 3 is equal to 0, so x is equal to negative 3 over 2. I'm going to do this more clearly, by the way. I'm just going through a sort of intro Speedy Gonzalez style for you, right? Keep this in mind. That is what we're doing. And what this means is if this was a function, you're finding your x-intercepts for a function. So if this was a function, you're finding your x-intercepts. That's what you're really doing. Okay. Nutrients. I also love how this translates into great. Yeah. The graphing part of this is the key, right? But they don't explain this to you. They start teaching factoring without putting it into context of what it is, right? Like for me, if I was going to teach factoring in grade 10, and I do to students in grade 10, I go through this whole routine. I take a nice amount of time. I'm like we just did it like in 10 minutes, 5 minutes, right? I take an hour or two hours or a week to explain to a student to appreciate what it is that they're doing and then we kick it back to this now i'm doing a speedy gonzalez style because we have a lot of videos online and stuff um, that we've done regarding this right and if you need to know what they are post you know ask me in discord and i'll link you up to the stuff but let's just go straight up into the factoring okay so you see what the different types of factoring are right now factoring is simplifying equation uh, simplifying expressions right you're factoring expressions let's just go straight on into solving right <laughs> math parable for you <laughs> i'm glad gamer friend uh, uh, fiend gamer fiend large key a large gamer fiend now take a look at this thing right what if we had this what if i said x squared minus x i'm not going to put the equal sign to yet right let's say i said factor this right factor here let's do it in column format so you see what the difference is right here factor and then we'll put solve here what if i said x squared minus x i said factor this right well you look for a gcf what's the gcf greatest common factor here it's an x they both have an x minimum right this has two x's this has one x so you can take out an x right so an x comes out then you ask yourself what do you multiply x by to give you x squared you multiply it by x what do you multiply x by to give you one and a lot of people miss this up right they say oh you took it out so there's nothing there no there is you started with two terms you need two terms okay 
What do you multiply x by to give you x? 1. So minus 1. There, you just factored this guy, right? x squared minus x is equal to 0. Solve this guy, right? This and this are the same. The difference between factoring and solving is factoring is part of solving something. A polynomial, really, right now that we're talking about, right? It's like simplifying versus solving. So in solving, in the question itself, you'll see an equal sign. When they say factor, there is no equal sign there. You're just trying to factor it, right? For us to be able to solve this, we have to factor it. So what we do, we factor out an x, you get x minus 1 is equal to 0. Now, we have two things multiplied together to give us 0. We've got x and x minus 1 multiply together to give us zero so you split them up right you say x could be zero or x minus one could be zero because that's the only way these two things could multiply together and give you zero that's not the truth that's not true for any other number i can't say two if this was two right you can't say oh one of these has to be two that doesn't work that way that's the power of zero Zero is the only number you could do this with, where you can split up the equation, right? So it has to be zero. And I'll show you how you can manipulate it to make sure it's zero, right? Zero. Well, in this case, x is equal to zero. That's an answer. And this becomes x is equal to one, because you could just grab this guy, bring it over. So that's an answer. So if x is zero in this, then zero this side will be zero which is equal to zero which is true and if x is one then this is true statement right let's do another one what if we had this x squared minus four i would say factor this and over here i would say solve this now double o negative if you're asking about factoring i'm assuming you know that this is a difference of squares if you have any two things subtracted from each other, could one of them be a 1? Yeah, right there. X is equal to 1, right? So if you put 1 in here, you could do a check, by the way. Here, let's do a check on this. Check. When you do a check, you take the left side of the equation, left side, and you take the right side, right side, right? The left side is, and we're going to check for x is equal to 1. The, right, the left side is x squared minus x. The right side is 0, and our x is 1, right? 1 squared is 1 minus 1 is 0. So 0 equals 0. Oop. This works. This works. Okay. Was typing before that Chicho. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. My channel points are building up. I need something. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'll have to spend them on. And yes, I have some ideas. Oh, yeah, the channel points. I totally forgot about channel points. I got to work on that. Oh, man, I totally forgot. I got to do. Uh, there was something I had in mind to do, but it sort of got put on the back burner. So if you're going to factor this, any two things subtracted from each other, you can factor. Got it? Any two things subtracted from each other. If you got a box minus a triangle, right? I don't care what's in the box and what's in the triangle. Right? These are placeholders. Any two things subtracted from each other, this is the way you factor them. Square root of this plus the square root of that times the square root of this minus the square root of that. Like, seriously, that's all. It's, the, it's one of the easiest factoring techniques there is. Okay, I missed the previous stream. What was in the mysterious small white retro box that you were going to uh, leave to last a small white retro box was that the hp uh calculator bitstorm i can't remember small retro box i think so yeah that was the hp calculator you were opening all your things old games and such there was a there was a, 
uh one special box that was the hp oh it's over there it's in uh put away it was an hp calculator yeah is that the one elder god i can't remember that had the programmable calculator from 1980s it was 1981 or 82 grabbed it that was in a leather case i think that's the one no any two things subtracted from each other you can factor these two are subtracted from each other so square root of x squared square root of box is x plus the square root of four is two square root of x squared is x minus square root of four which is two so we just factored it right solve this well to solve that we have to factor it or one of the ways we could do it is factoring it right so x plus 2 x minus 2 now we have two things multiplied together to give us 0 we can split them up set each one equal to 0 so this x x plus 2 is equal to 0 or x minus 2 is equal to 0 so x is equal to negative 2 and x is equal to 2 those are your solutions for this variable was the box uh, approximately one foot by one foot if so it was a game console and wires was it i can't remember so many boxes <laughs> you can look at it oh he might be talking about the earlier white box the white box we're looking for the white box follow the white rabbit too many prize possessions going <laughs> too many yes in 1980s program calculator yeah that must have been it the hp 1980s program calculator which was really cool actually right now there's other types of factoring we have simple trinomial number three x squared plus uh 3x plus two and let's solve this as well x squared plus 3x plus 2 is equal to 0 right so this guy is a trinomial trinomial three terms right so if you have a and it's called a simple trinomial because the number in front of the x squared is a 1 so if you have a number if you have a three term expression and it's a trinomial okay a quadratic really and a quadratic is the power on this guy is twice the power on that guy okay and if there is a one in front of the x squared then what you can do is do this let's do trinomials let's do trinomials if this is a simple trinomial then you're looking for two numbers that multiply to give you two and add to give you one now if you know your multiplication table well and you should right what are two numbers that multiply to give you two and add to give you three two numbers that multiply to give you two and add to give you three well two times one gives you two two plus one gives you three so you break this down you go x x because that's x squared and that's an x if this was x to the fourth that would have been x squared then you put x squared here okay then you go two numbers to multiply two add to give you three it's plus two plus one if you multiply this out you're going to get this back should we do a test test on it channel points idea ask chicho at least five thousand to avoid troll abuse what at least five thousand to avoid troll abuse so here let's do a test to make sure this is that so test and if they ask you to factor you don't need to test it but let's expand it right let's go x plus 2 times x plus 1 this multiplies this this multiplies this this multiplies this this multiplies that x times x is x squared x times 1 is x 2 times x is 2 2 times 1 is 2 x plus oops, 2x i forgot the x is 3x so this is x squared plus 3x plus 2. sorry if it's small we're just doing a test so we're just convincing ourselves right so that's the same as that that's just the the pattern that trinomials go into right so that's factoring that and if you're trying to solve a trinomial you factor it you just got to equal to zero there 
So this becomes x plus 2, x plus 1. You got two things multiplied together to give you 0. You can split them up, set each one equal to 0. x plus 2 is equal to 0. x plus 1 is equal to 0. x is equal to negative 2. x is equal to negative 1. Right? Okay. Makes sense. Oh, ask Chicho. So, like asking math or political questions depending on stream. So, if uh, someone comes on, if they use 5,000 points, they can ask any question during any stream. Is that what you're talking about? And getting full Chicho attention. Uh, Elder God, not a bad idea. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, true. That's a good idea. Okay, we talk about it. If if you guys are game, we do, we do. Is that clear? Uh, double or negative? Let's do some more of these, but we're not gonna factor anymore because factoring comes into play in solving. So let's just stick with the solving, right? Because once you learn factoring, that really is gonna kick you into solving quadratics. And when you're solving quadratics, what you're doing is finding the x-intercepts, and we'll do that right now, right? So let's assume we said solve the following equation. Uh, is equal to zero, right? And if you want, we could do it like this. Here, watch this. We could write it out like this. X squared minus 7X is equal to negative 10, right? So whenever you get something like this, Got it. How about factoring? <laughs> this is a huge number. Sure, double O negatives. We'll do it. I'm having problems coming up with GCF between these. Okay, we'll do that one next. Okay, I'm just going to write it out here. 2x squared. 2x squared minus 5x minus 5x plus 3 minus 375. Minus 375. What a pain in the ass. Right? But we'll take a look at it. Right? Now, if you got something like this, whenever you're trying to solve for an expression like this or an equation like this, you want to, if you got multiple different types of x's to a different power, right? If you have a single x, you're just going to get x by itself, so move everything else to the other side. If you got an x squared and an x, or x cubed and an x squared, or whatever it is, if you got x's that are to different powers, bring everything to one side, make the other side equal to zero. Okay? So you can factor one side and utilize the power of zero with the other side being zero tell me about it double <laughs> negative sets so we're going to bring this guy over so this becomes x squared minus 7x plus 10 is equal to zero now this is a simple trinomial simple trinomial you're looking for two numbers that multiply to give you 10 add to give you negative 7. you can make a table so multiply to give you positive 10 add to give you negative 7 two numbers are multiply to give you 10 1 times 10 but if you do add those up that's 11 that doesn't work negative 1 times negative 10 that multiplies to give you positive 10 but adds together to give you negative 11 that's not what we're looking for 2 times 5 gives you 10 but 2 plus 5 gives you 7 right not negative 7 so close but no cigar well, how about negative 2 times negative 5? That multiplies to give you positive 7. Negative 2 plus negative 5 is negative 7, which is exactly what we want. So you split this up. You go x, x, minus 2, minus 5, right? And then what you do is you go, oh, you got two things multiplied to give you 0. x minus 2, split them up. So x is equal to 2 and x is equal to 5. Ta -da, ta -da. We're done, right? Easy peasy. Off topic. 45 days till the PS5 comes out. The other God says, hi, hi, hi. <laughs> Make sense? Now, let's take a look at this one. Now, this guy is a complex trinomial. I'm going to show you there are two ways to solve trinomials, quadratics. This works when things work out fine we're going to try complex trinomial a technique called the four-step method that i've shown before we've covered all this in 
the language of mathematics playlist. There's a ton of videos I put out regarding this, by the way. Okay, but let's go over some of these Speedy Gonzalez style, right? So let's transfer that guy down. 2x squared minus 5x minus 375, right? And let's set it equal to zero. Now, in general, if you can find the GCF to get rid of the number in front of the x squared, you take it out. So for example, if you had this, 2x squared minus 14x plus 20, you would go, hey, the GCF of this is 2, so you can take a 2 out. You're always going to look for the GCF. If there's a GCF, take it out, right? You take a 2 out. What do you multiply 2 to get 2x squared? x squared. What do you multiply 2 by to give you negative 14x minus 7x? What do you multiply 2 to give you 20? 10. And this is what we factored previously. So it turns into x minus 2, x minus 5. Right? Easy peasy. Right? So this is a simple trinomial. It just had a GCF of 2. This, you can't take the 2 out. Not simply anyway. You could just go 5 over 2 and 375 over 2 but that gives you fractions that complicates things okay so no GCF in terms of just um, natural numbers or integers right so this is a method that I have to factor these things if it's factorable easily without the quadratic formula take this number and multiply it by this number move it there right and you're dropping it from here so this becomes x squared minus 5x 375 times 2 is 750 is it not minus 750 is equal to zero okay are you okay with that now we're looking for two numbers that multiply to give you negative 750 add together to give you negative 5. now they have to be if they multiply to give you negative one's positive one's negative if they add to give you negative the bigger number is negative the smaller number is positive right it is weird i can do this in my head what are two numbers that multiply to give you 750 do you know it elder god i don't know it top of my head i don't know it what are two numbers that multiply to give you together to give you 750 let's do it here multiply together if there is any well there are but they also have to add to give you negative five right for me i would take a calculator and i would go 75 and 10 right so if you go 75 and 10 negative 75 times 10 gives you negative 750 but if you add these guys oh right on bit storm you got right if you add these guys you're going to get negative 80 negative 65 right 65 that doesn't work right that's not negative five right thinking <laughs> what are two other numbers multiplied together to give you negative 750 uh bitstorm laid it out for us right but we could also go two times 375 two times negative 375 but those two multiply added together it doesn't give you negative five that gives you negative 373 so that doesn't work at all and you can go through a whole bunch of process and you're gonna find 25 times 30 does it here let's do it 25 times 30 0 5 15 1 6 7 right on right so it's 25 times 30 gives you 750 but we want it to be negative 750 and add it together to give you negative 5 so it's negative 35 because negative 35 plus 25 is negative 5. cool we just found the two numbers got it <laughs> the guy's <are> laughing <laughs> growl hello how are you doing so what you do now is you go okay so this becomes x and x keep in mind this is a quadratic because the power here is double the power on the x here which is one if that was a four that would have been a two and these guys would have been squared if that was a six that would have been a three and these guys would have been cubed 
right? And we got the numbers positive 25 and my negative 30. Okay. Now, this guy factored is this guy. But we weren't trying to factor this guy. We're trying to factor this guy. Now what you can do is, you're not done with this process. You take you take the two that you took here and multiply by this. You drop it in front of the x's. So here you're going to have 2x and here you're going to have 2x. And then what you do is, let's make sure this is focused. And then what you do is, you look at each one of these. You take out the GCF and dump it. Is there a GCF between 2x and 25? There isn't. So you leave this as 2x plus 25. Is there a GCF between 2, 2x and 30? Yes, there is. 2. So you take the 2, get rid of it. Now you got x minus 15 is equal to 0. So the answer for this would be 2x plus 25 is equal to 0. And 2x, not 2x, x minus 15 is equal to 0. So for this is x is equal to 15. That's one answer. Here would be 2x is equal to negative 25 divided by 2. So x is equal to negative 25 over 2, which is negative 12.5. Right? Does that make sense? I understand now. Basic math is very easy to me. It's all them x's that are confusing me. <laughs> right? Does that make sense? I hope so. Now keep this in mind. This is just the I call this the four step method. I learned it from a student that learned it from a teacher she had that was like 20 years ago, right? Fan James Bond, how are you doing? Now, if if math, love it. If you couldn't figure out what this combination was, you always have your option to go to the quadratic formula so let's use the pretty use the quadratic formula okay i wish i was good at math i usually blank out as soon as an exam is placed in front of me a practice practice large gamer fiend bit confused though how can you just pull out the two at the start and move it across you, it's it's a trick for a complex trinomial it's a technique that works. There's proofs on it online. I've, I've looked through it and I go, yep, yep, it works, right? But what you're doing is you're taking this, multiply by this, dropping this, you're jerry-rigging it really, factoring this as a simple trinomial because you can, it's a simple trinomial, and then you introduce the two back in and then take out the GCF and dump it. Uh, double O negative, does that help? My issue is coming up with the numbers on your table what multiplies by what to add to another like your four-step method though yeah um, one way you can do it if the numbers are large uh, you know I'm not a fan of a calculator but when you get large numbers like this use a calculator if you can right just sit there and divide by natural numbers right so take 750 and go divide it by 10 and try to get close to a difference of numbers here right so you would go, I don't have a calculator here. You would go 750 divided by 10, you would get 75. Well, those can't combine to give you negative 5. And you go 750 divided by 15, see if that works. If that gives you a number, an integer, see if the difference of those is 5. If it's not, move on. And slowly work your way up, right? And what you're going to find out is, at a certain point, you're going to cross into numbers the two numbers you're looking for are going to cross each other okay if they exist is there a name for that step i will google it i, I call it the four step method i don't know what it's called i don't know if there's an official name for it or not bitstorm i really don't it works uh kenny roberts laugh out loud you should have divided the x coefficients by two all right the x coefficients well, if you divide that, you're going to get, they're not integers anymore. So it becomes even more difficult. So for example, uh, here, let's rewrite this. I want to take these guys down, gang. Any questions regarding this? Fishburn, how are you doing? Hello, Chicho in chat. All right. 
I think Racerkill is saying we should have over here divided everything by two to get a simple trinomial. The problem is we would have had 375 over two. Now we're looking for two numbers to multiply to give you 375 over two and have to give you negative five over two, which is like, oh, cool. That's what I needed, a process for finding them. Yeah, it's really, it's a beautiful process. It's so simple. And usually they teach decomposition in my part of the world. And decomposition sucks trying to factor complex trinomials it's sort of the same process but not you take this multiply by this you get this and then you got to split this into two things here I'll show you decomposition it's horrendous should I show, show you decomposition? I'll show you decomposition watch this I'm gonna erase this and then we'll I'll show you the complex trinomial this is two here this is the method that they teach in my part. They go, okay, you got a complex trinomial. How do you factor this? We'll take two times 375. Two times negative 375, you get negative 750. Okay. Now what you're thinking about, you're thinking about two numbers that multiply together to give you negative 750. Uh, apologies for coming in late. What's the current topic? Uh, factoring. Right now we're talking about complex trinomials. Okay. And no worries about dropping in the late. So you're going to look for two numbers that multiply to give you negative 750 and they add together to give you negative 5x. And we looked at some of these and we got 25 times negative 30. That combination gives you negative 750. So what you do is you split up the negative 5. You go 2x squared and you have to split it up in a way of grouping. So you group them so you can group the things together, right? You're going to go 2x squared plus 25x, oops, x minus 30x minus 375 is equal to 0. And then what you're going to do is group these two and those two together. Okay. And if that doesn't work, you group the, this guy and that guy and that guy and that guy together. Now, these two grouping together and these two grouping together is not going to be the best. This and this grouping together and this and this grouping together is the way you want to go with it. You know, I've forgotten half of this, but math is so much fun, so much fun. Right? So I'm going to rewrite this and group this and this together. So it's going to be 2x squared minus 30x plus 25x minus 375 is equal to zero. And then group these two. Right? So if you group these two, you just put brackets around them. 2x squared minus 30x plus bracket 25x minus 375 is equal to zero. Now, if this was a minus, then the sign here would change. And you have to keep that in mind as well, right? And then what you're doing is you're going to take out the GCF. Now, what's the GCF out of here? 2x comes out of this, right? So this becomes x minus... 15 okay what's the gcf out of here 25 comes out of this so this becomes plus 25 x minus 15 because 25 times 15 is 375 i know that because i got this is equal to zero and then what you do is oh i forgot the x here it's 2x that comes out of this right we factor out 2x from this right 2x then what you do is you say, oh, look, there's a GCF here. So we grab this and this and bring it out. So now you got X minus 15 times 2X plus 25 is equal to zero. And that is what we had before, but this method is horrendous. Thank you, BitStorm. Got it. Never mind. <laughs> I know I drop things. I make little mistakes here and there. I agree with you. Doing this now is much less daunting than it was during adolescence. Yeah, oh my God. <laughs> what I love about math is at the end of the exercise, if it all is right, that's so sad. That's so satisfying. It just works. And then this becomes x is equal to 15 and x is equal to negative 25 over 2, which is what we had before, right? What's the other way to factor this? Use the quadratic formula. Right. 
quadratic formula says this. Let's assume we didn't we didn't want to go through that mental exercise, right? You go, okay, this is a quadratic. We know it's a quadratic. And what we're going to do is just going to use the quadratic formula to factor this. Negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And the a, b, and c in this are the terms here. a, b, and c, right? It's like this. ax squared plus bx plus c, right? They went over that in class too, but they called it factoring by grouping. Is that what they call it? Factoring by grouping. I don't like factoring by grouping. I like the four-step method that we did, right? So what you do is figure out what A, B, and C are. Your A is a number here, which is two. Your B is a number here. And one of the mantras in mathematics, the number, the sign in front of the number goes with the number. The sign in front of the number goes with the number. Say it with me again. The sign in front of the number goes with the number, right? The other mantra is reduce before you multiply, right? So this isn't 5, it's negative 5. And this isn't 375, it's negative 375, right? And then all you do, you put these where they belong in the quadratic formula, right? So this becomes x is equal to negative b. So negative negative 5 is 5 plus or minus square root of b squared, which is going to be negative 5 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is negative 375, all over 2a, which is 2 times 2. So this becomes 5 plus or minus square root of 25. Negative and negative is positive, so it becomes plus. Two time, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 375, what's 8 times 375, 8, 44, 56, uh, 66, uh, da, 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 24, 30, right, 300, or th uh, 3000, did we do that correctly, I think so, seems a little off. I call a system called Pi Reduction Method, but I can't say it is the system. I Chicho, great to see you. you're doing math. Yes, talk X talk programmer. All right, so 40, 0, 4, 56, 0, 6, 24, 30. Yeah, so 3, 0, 0, 0, all over 4. That means 5 plus or minus square root of 3, 0, 2, 5 over 4. Now, what's the square root of? 3025 yeah that's good 3000 is good 3000 is good okay so what's the square root of 3025 now this I'm going to use a calculator we already know what it is because if we do the thing but boop, it's 55 right Chicho from makes my day brighter <laughs> when he streams releases of it something something five something something five so it's 55 so this becomes five plus or minus 55 over four that means we got two answers here x is equal to five plus 55 over four and x is equal to five minus 55 oops 55 over four 55 5 plus 55 is 60. 60 divided by 4 is 15. 50 divided by 4 is going to be 25, negative 25 over 2, which is the same answer as we, we got before. So x is equal to 15 and x is equal to negative 25 over 2. Okay, because it was negative 50, this was negative 50 over 4 and 2 goes into both of them, right? Negative 55 over 2 and x is equal to 15. and if you're going to express this in factor format you would have gone x is equal to 15 bring the 15 over so it's x minus 5 and x is equal to negative 25 over 2 cross multiply 2 up so 2x is equal to negative 25 bring the 25 over so 2x plus 25 is the other factor does that make sense? I hope so. 
thanks so much for the help chicho you've helped me quite a bit i have to take off soon so i'll yield the floor to the other delegates awesome uh double one negative i'm glad this helped and i'm pretty sure it'll help other people that are that need to help with this as well uh, I can't believe I made a live stream, Ronald Red. How are you doing? <laughs> Hope you're doing well. We're into the last 15 minutes of this stream, but that was good. We did good mathematics. We did uh, the Speedy Gonzalez uh, covered a fair bit. Just with the factoring stuff, right? Welcome, by the way, Roland. What's our uptime? Up time. I think we're an hour and unrecognized. What? What's going on with my commands? Oh, I gotta do this. Jeez, what am I doing? Yeah, hour and forty-five minutes. Good mathing. Good mathing. We're mathsing. <laughs> mathsing. Yeah. Can't we just uh, derive the function? Uh, we did. You mean take the derivative of the function? Or derive the function well this is the function this is f of x this guy and by the way gang what did we just find when we do this we found the x-intercepts of this quadratic function so I'm just gonna erase this so I'm gonna take these out so on a graph this is what we did here we'll leave these guys at the bottom so on a graph this is what we ended up doing X is equal to 15, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And X is equal to negative 25 over 2 is negative 12.5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So here in the middle, this is a quadratic function that opens up. So we just found this. And the Y intercept is negative 375, way over here, negative 375. 0 and negative 375 not to scale not to scale the graph looks like this and it's heavier on this side because this is 15 and this is negative 12.5 so the vertex of this is a little bit on this side goes through here and goes like this we just found this is a horrendous parabola <laughs> not to scale we just found the x-intercepts of this parabola that's what we just did right that's what these represent x is equal to 15 and x is equal to negative 25 over 2 because if this was a function we just set y equal to 0 that's what we did right so you can think about it as this is f of x right what happens if y is 0 0 What's your x? Your x is this because this point here is 15 and 0 and this point here is negative 12.5 and 0. Okay. I hope that's clear. I hope that's clear. Should we call the stream gang? Okay, cool bond says. Lucio it is Gauss. Roland, I watched so many of these after the fact. Some of the mods are like celebrities. <laughs> Elder God, Christian fundamentalist. I hear these names over and over. <laughs> nice. Large Gamer Fiend, how are you doing? And Cheryl, of course, right? <laughs> I just had a memory. Flatten the curve, flatten the curve. Oh no. This is the only time I can happily watch math. Nice. I Well, I hope you you find more happiness and mathematics in the future but uh, thank you for the compliment I did one year econ but I forgot almost all of it so sad but if I do them again it will come back quick it will come back quick and some of the stuff uh, the important concepts I'm pretty sure are still in there that's the important stuff uh, that is quite you know useful really right thank you for the questions gang by the way uh, it was good math today. I like I like going to the Speedy Gonzalez format um, because we've covered a fair bit of stuff in the past. And uh, for those watching this after the fact, I'll have the links to the playlists uh, 
in the description of the video as as before always really and all the social networks we have are all in the in the description you too cheryl you always do the polls for the movie reviews i believe yeah and the comic books and the comic books the movies we're doing movie streams this uh, this time around with this set um have you have you guys watched all the movies i've watched two of them so far i'm going to be watching the other two in the next couple of days <laughs> good memory cheryl says it's catholic but your name is kind of right as well yeah so uh we're going to be doing movie streams i got i watched tombstone and the forbidden planet i got uh el topo to watch and um breakfast club to watch as well looking forward to el topo <laughs> elder god yeah the useful things are still here like um uh, partial derivatives and the jacobian matrix who is so cool to do yeah i'm still throwing up <laughs> god <laughs> uh, so do we know when the movie stream will be yeah um i will do everything within my power to make it yeah it's uh if you go to my patreon page it's on the top post right now um the the schedule and if you go to our discord it's there as well here i'll give you the link to the patreon uh, because the discord i don't know how to link a specific post in discord i don't i don't know why uh, or a specific location i haven't really looked too much for it because there's so much going on i never it's sort of a rolling thing that goes on but here's the link to our patreon page with the schedule friday 8 p.m yeah and then monday as well we pick four new movies so there's two movie streams we're going to be doing one of them is reviewing talking about the movies uh, we picked last time the four movies and talking about them and on monday i believe we're going to pick four new movies for the next month to watch so they're approximately a month apart these movie streams okay month month and a half apart gang aside from that thank you for being here moss thank you for taking care of business gang thank you for the discussion thank you for the recommendations of which nuts are the best proteins and the best source of omega omega whatever it is okay new picks monday at 10 a.m monday at 10 a.m new picks cool oh the cuban cigar catalog was yeah i i flipped through it dude it's it's just a catalog where we can look at the different cigars and and whatnot um and for a decade i was into cigars in a big way uh, i worked in an exclusive c cuban cigar store as well for about a year or so uh, so and this is a catalog i picked out i'll give you guys the lowdown when when we do it okay we'll do it in like comic book format uh where we're doing the top down view just look at the catalog okay it's just lots of pictures and pictures of the cigars young Paulette. bye chicho much love much love gang gang if you want to follow this work i'm on patreon patreon.com forward slash chicho c-h-y-c-h-o if you want to follow this work if you want to support this work patreon is a great way to do so i don't put anything behind paywalls everything's creative commons share and share alike and for those of you who've been supporting this work through patreon thank you very much for your support it is because of you that we're able to continue this work okay we are live streaming on twitch twitch.tv forward slash chicho live c-h-y-c-h-o-l-i-v-e if you want to participate in the chat twitch is where you want to be at and for those of you who've been subscribing following through twitch thank you very much for the subscribes for the follows for the discussions for being here it is in large part because of you as well that we're able to do this work i do announce these live streams 30 minutes before we go live on hello minds vk parlor gab and twitter and uh for unscheduled live streams we do announce them a few minutes before we go live and we do share some additional content there as well there are podcasts audio of live streams when we just do open discussions when there's no visuals involved and those are available on soundcloud.com forward slash chicho and they should be available on your favorite podcasting platform including spot spotify and itunes or apple podcasts now thanks to cheryl for setting that up and this video will be uploaded to bitshoot and youtube and you can support this work by um, on those platforms by subscribing by following uh, by turning on notifications and commenting and sharing and if you're on youtube you can support this work by joining 
YouTube membership and thank you very much for joining YouTube membership and for the support thanks for the stream my 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 pleasure I bring death <laughs> great name domino set has to be in Cuban stream domino said oh man I gotta get my domino set out I uh, I'll try to find it I I'll try to find it uh, just found your parlor nice nice picture uh, these are awesome <laughs> awesome <laughs> large camera fiend <laughs> but yeah thanks for today's stream i came a little a bit late but never mind the next time we'll be here early awesome awesome and just follow the uh the uh patreon feed if you want you don't have to commit funds right to be able to get the feed right you can just follow and after a while if you do think that this work is worth supporting uh, supporting it through patreon is a great way to do so but i do announce the schedule on there okay if you want to get it cigar asmr is the best form no contest and at some point we'll I'll, i'm gonna get back into smoking cigars we'll see gang i hope you have a fantastic day and i'll see you guys in tomorrow's stream we got six more coming this week bye everyone